Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up your camera on your Galaxy S21, S21 Ultra, or any recent smartphones that came out from Samsung because they'll have this similar kind of interface. I'm going to walk you through so you get the absolute best photos. If you did miss our video on how to save battery life and make the phone faster, definitely check those out too because I want to make sure you have the best experience possible with this phone including our hidden features video that's coming out next week. So let's get started. As we launch the camera, this has been reset, so it's just how it comes out of the box when you get it. So let's get started with this. We're gonna go to the top, then here, here, and here. So first of all, three by four, this is the best quality to shoot with. I know it tells you, hey, you can shoot at 108 megapixels, but the problem with this mode is it's not very good in low light. And it's a big file too. So this is just a better way. Overall, you get more details in this shot instead of the 108 megapixel shot, just because it's just naturally better and quicker, which gives you that split second less to get a blurry photo. Speaking of blurry photos, I do recommend turning on this area, which is called motion photos. So if you do have a kid or a pet, this is really good. Or if you take pictures of fast moving things like cars or anything like that, this is a really good way to have a second chance to get a better photo. Basically it takes a bunch of photos before and after to hopefully get a clear shot of when you hit the shutter button and hopefully get that perfect picture. Over here we have the filters area. So with the filters area, you can do preset filters that you have right here. You can create your own filters off of say like a blue photo or a green photo or something along those lines. But what I think most people might be interested in is the face one. Depending on what part you are right now in your life in terms of how your face is looking, you can enhance it depending on how you want. So smoothness really helps out if you have acne or wrinkles. So basically this will get rid of that. Even if for myself, if I wanna get rid of my stubble after not shaving for a couple days, this gets rid of it. Then from here you have tone. This will change your tone depending on your skin tone. This might be one to really look at so that you get the best looking color that more reflects your natural skin tone. You also have the jawline effect. So if you wanna lose five pounds or so on your face, well, as simple as that. Then you have the eyes, if you wanna make your eyes bigger. If you're always being told, open your eyes, this might be one you're looking at. Now, these are all with the rear camera settings that we have on right now, because we're on the rear camera, but you can always turn that on the front camera as well. Okay, then we have a couple of things. So for one, if you ever wanna focus on a specific subject, you can hold it down to lock it. So now that specific subject is what the lighting is going on and it's what the focus is going on. Even if I move over here, it's not going to focus on that because it's focused at that distance. So that's just one thing you should know. The other thing you should know is if you tap and then swipe up or down a little bit, this can sometimes stop what's called an overexposure. So if it's a very bright day or a very bright uh, neon light in the night, I will typically tap and then go a little bit darker. You're going to get a better overall photo if you do that. So just a quick tidbit. Then we're going to go through our zooms right here. So this is a 1X, a 0.6X, 3x and 10x. So what does that mean? Well, it means we start off with a ultra wide angle right here. Regular primary camera, this is your best quality camera you have. Three times optical, which zooms in a good amount. This is what most other standard phones shoot at, at three times optical. And this is a 10 times optical. So this is a really zoomed in shot and you're gonna get amazing photos of far off things by doing this. This is really great when you travel, when you go to weddings, things like that. When you really want to shoot a subject that's further away, that is so good. And trust me, I've taken a lot of great shots with it. And speaking of which, after you tap it again, you can actually see these in terms of different lengths. So you can actually see which one you want to shoot with. You can even go up to 30X. Now 30X, I'm way too close. But the idea behind 30X is that you can actually zoom in and it's gonna be a little bit digital, but you shouldn't go past 30X if you want a clear photo. Now I can show you when I was at the supermarket, I could see the price of some apples that were very far off. I could also go full creeper mode. And this is what's kind of scary about this guy zoom. I made sure no one was on the balcony, but as you can see, you can really see far, far away very easily. And it's just a really great way of being able to do that. And you can also do that with videos, which I'll go over in a second in terms of zoom. 
So those are going to be your zooms. You can also slide those instead if you want to do that. But I recommend for anyone starting off, just go by the natural ones. So go by either the 0.6, 1x, 3x, or 10x. Now we're going to go into our different modes here at the bottom. And I'm gonna show you which ones I really recommend and why. So as we go into more, we're gonna click add, and this will allow us to customize the whole area. So I do not like single take. I just, it's not for me. It's kind of random. Oh, it might take a good photo. It might take a good video. It might take something good. You're better off just shooting a photo or video that you want, and I think you'd be much happier. Okay, so what I do recommend putting on here is Pro Video. We'll get to this in a second, but there's a really great features on here. So I would recommend that. Regular video still has its place for sure. And then director's view as well. This allows you to shoot with the front camera and rear camera at the same time. So it's really good for that purpose. Actually, we'll move the Pro Video over here. Just so we have all the videos to the right and all the photos to the left. Then you can also do a uh, night shot, which I really like for photos. Um, so if you want to do a night shot, this one's really good at night shots. And there's some tricks that we're gonna go over in our, uh, in our hidden features video that will definitely help out with that. And then if you want slow motion, I don't shoot it that often. So super slow motion is at 720p, but it's more zoomed in and has a slower effect. I recommend shooting at slow motion with 1080p, which is right here. It's much better quality uh, overall, in my opinion. So if you want slow motion, choose this one. You can also do portrait video, which is a kind of cool effect that I use here and there. So I will drop that off over here. And there you go. That's the ones that I recommend. I shoot a lot of different video. That's why I have more videos than photos section. But it's also because the automatic photo is really good. So you don't need to change much there. Moving on to video though, let me go over the best quality video. So overall, I feel the best quality video is going to be UHD at 30 frames per second. So this is my main recommendation when it comes to shooting video here. This is actually a little bit better than what you're seeing it at right now. What you're seeing it at right here is 1080p at 60 frames per second. So just a smoother overall look. And trust me, the video quality looks really good. The nice thing about this version too is you can actually zoom in on this phone beforehand. You can't do it during, but you can shoot a video at whichever lens you want to and film at that quality. So I really do like that feature just to be able to shoot at a really good quality with your 4K 60 frames per second. Now, if you are moving around a lot, I recommend this hand shaking thing. So this changes the video quality to 1080p at 60 frames per second. But what this does is it very stabilizes your shot. So if you're shaking around or if you're moving a lot or you're running in a shot, this is going to give you much steadier uh, hands. And this is really good. I've tried it already. It's a very good quality. And then I'm going to take you over to pro video for a second, just to go over two things here. So one, the more video qualities you can shoot with. So you can actually shoot at different frame rates. FHD 120 is a really good looking shot. Unfortunately, almost no device online or platform online like YouTube or anything accepts this yet, but it's a really good looking thing to have for the future. And then you have 4K 24 frames per second. Now, whereas the 60 frames per second gives you a very realistic look, 24 frames per second gives you that more cinematic look. So it gives a look like a movie uh, frame rate. It's slower down, but it really gives that really movie-like frame rate. So I usually leave my pro video at 24 and my regular video at 60. Now, the other thing you want to take a look at here is your microphone. So you can shoot with Omni, which means your mic is picking up from the front and rear side of the phone, or just with the front side or just with the rear side. So depending on what you want to shoot with, but the absolute best is right here. If you have Bluetooth headphones connected, you can pick up from much better mics that are closer to you. So this is really good if you're traveling, film with Bluetooth headphones, and that's gonna be a much, much better quality. And then we have director's view. Director's view is a really cool feature because it allows you to film with the front camera and rear camera 
at the same time. I love this feature. We've wanted it for a long time back and it's finally back here. So I would really recommend just trying it out when you need to. For vloggers, that is perfect. However, just so you know, it only films at 1080p at 30 frames per second. So Samsung, bring that to 60 frames per second and we'll be much, much happier. Okay, and then we have our selfies. So for selfies, you automatically get natural or bright. If you have a darker skin tone, you definitely want natural. Bright, I don't know. I guess like if, if you like to have a brighter skin look than what your actual natural one is, you could have it here. But even me, I'm very fair skinned and I, I look whitewashed when I do that even more so. So I don't like the bright look. I guess if you want that makeup kind of look uh, without going to the filters, that's what bright would be for. But I definitely recommend most people shoot natural. The other thing you'd want to do is always stay in here. This is your full screen and this is like a zoomed in slightly version. So just have the wider angle and you're going to just have a better experience with that. Then when we go to settings here, you're going to want to do a couple of things. So one, use your ultra wide group selfie. So that always stays on automatically. It switches to it. And then we're going to also change this to off. So what this does is it always uh, flips it and this can allow you. So if you're a person that wants to take selfies, this is a better option because when you actually take the selfie, this is with it off, this is with it on. So what does that mean? It means that your text is never going to look correct. You generally have to flip it. This actually is already pre-flip. So if you want to take a photo for selfies, this is going to be a better way to do it. And then the last thing we're going to want to go to for selfies is going to be in settings. Go to settings to keep and always have the selfie angle that you had last. If you want to shoot the filters always that you had, you can leave that on too. So say if you always want your rear camera to kind of correct any wrinkles or any stuff like that, you can have that on as well. Um, and if you always want to shoot in the last mode, you can do that. Now let's go over to the rest of the settings though, so we can make sure that we have the best part. Before we do that, your video here can also shoot at 4K 60. So just so you know that for your front camera. Now let's change all the settings. So as we go to settings for video, you're going to want to turn on stabilization. You're also going to want to keep this one off and this one on. This one will make it so that it changes the format. You do not want that format. Again, it is not compatible with a lot. We'll go over the photos as well. High efficiency is really great concept, but it's just not available yet for most apps and most uh, computers even, and smartphones don't even accept it yet. Zoom in mic, that is definitely gonna be good. So if you zoom into something, the audio picks up from there. Location tags, I always turn on just so I have that ready. And depending on your country or carrier, you can turn it on and off the shutter button. And finally, if you want to track autofocus, you can do that as well. Basically what this does is if you want to track something in a specific image, you can hit right there and it is going to track that thing. Even if it moves around, it's going to keep its focus on there. Okay, now we're going to change the last section, which is the settings in the camera area. So this is for photos. We were on the video section right now. So for photos, there's a couple of things I recommend. Keep screen optimizer on and document scanner. This will allow you to scan something like a menu, a document into a PDF, whatever you need to, but just the quality of this is so good and it really saves you from getting a separate document scanner. This does a really good job of just saving it right away. QR code I would turn on. Uh, grid lines, if you need them to just basically balance your shot and make sure you're right away. Suggestion shot does a one line instead of doing the full professional grid lines. So that's just available if you need that. And right here is going to go to our button at the bottom. So the shutter can do two things on your regular camera mode. One, if you hold it down, it will instantly go into shooting a 1080p at 30 frames per second video. And again, just a really quick way. And as soon as you let go, bam, it's done with the video. So that's a quick and easy way if you need to do a quick video. The other thing you could do is swipe down 
and this is a burst mode. So basically this is going to give you so many photos of one thing. I took 29 photos there, as you can see, so you can find the best one you want and then save that item. So you can also make a GIF out of it, whatever you want to do, but that's just another thing you can do from the shutter right here. So you can either do the swipe down to be a burst or a GIF. Again, for the format, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is off. If you shoot in professional photos, you do wanna turn raw on there. It's just a much better way to edit photos. And your ultra wide angle, you always wanna add correction or else it'll have kind of like a misshape around the edges if you don't. Make sure your auto HDR is on along with your video stabilization and then shooting methods. So I definitely always love to have the voice on for your shots, just so you can say capture, shoot, record video. It's a really easy way to do it, especially with the note, you can click the pen, but with this version, you can't. So this is just a really good alternative just to be able to not need to tap it because if you can hold your phone, like this and just say it, you're going to get a better shot because your phone is more stable than when you have one hand and tapping it. But if you do wanna hold it with one hand and have a easier time, floating shutter button allows you to have a floating shutter button. So I can just take a photo like this at an awkward angle, bam, instead of having to reach all the way down here. So this will help you out a lot when you're taking your photos and just drop it back down when you wanna get rid of it. Now you can pull it up, but often, like I sometimes start a video when doing that and stuff like that, but just letting you know you can pull it back up as long as it's okay, so yeah. All right, so those are going to set you up to take the absolute best photos and videos with this phone. I really do hope you liked this video. If you did, please give a like thumbs up down below. I think you're gonna take amazing photos and videos now and tag me on social media if you did have really good quality after this at YouTube Tech Guy. Thank you as always so much for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.